Hey there, folks. So, got a bit of a weird one today. Uh, I want to talk about, quickly, this Game Boy Color that I just built somewhat recently. Uh, this is using that new-ish 2.6-inch Cloud Game Store uh, Game Boy Color backlit LCD kit. Um, I was very pleased with this. The end result was pretty darn similar to those Q5 kits but with a much smaller screen that is a lot easier to install in a stock Game Boy Color housing, for example, uh, with pretty similar picture quality. Now, it wasn't nearly as bright, uh, and it only used 2x integer scaling instead of 4x, which meant that there was no uh, pixel grid emulation, which personally I didn't care too much about, but I know a lot of you guys did care, and it was kind of a bit of a bummer, but overall, very pleased with the kit. Well. Uh, about a month after I did that video, they came out with a brand new version of the thing. Uh, and I've got a special edition version of that kit even. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, it's going to be a bit of a weird video because at the time I'm making this, there is literally no way to get this kit. Uh, you gotta know someone. Uh, but what it is, it is the standard kit, as in the converger, converter, and ribbon are of course the same and then you've got the regular screen that they use except in my case it is fully laminated to a new LCD a little bit dirty I've been handling it and I'm not the first person to handle it uh, but it'll clean up nicely and it looks pretty good so how this how this works the uh, screen in the old kit looked something like this now I can't really pull this off and show you what it looks like behind the lens but if we take a look at the back, you can see that it is pretty much the same LCD. Uh, the dimensions even are the exact same here. So the install process is pretty much the same. The only difference is they changed it to a smaller ribbon to make it a little bit easier to install. So performance of the screen itself is going to be pretty much identical. The new features are in the kit itself on this end. So on this version of the kit, the older, the original version, I have a touch sensor on the back here. We can toggle through brightness, set it down to low, and then power it back up, but you notice it's still in high brightness again. And you know, if we sit there and hold it, I can hold it as long as I want. It's never gonna do anything because there's no on hold feature. All it does is toggle between brightness. Uh, this one's a little bit newer. Now you might notice this eight pin chip right here at U6. This looks to be an EEPROM to me, uh, which usually means um, when you see one of these on a backlight kit, usually means it holds on to settings. So that's at least one new feature. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know the other ones offhand, but uh, let's go ahead and install it and get it checked out. So, like I said, it is a bit of a weird one in that you can't get one of these currently, but if all goes well, you know, if, if, if this receives some pretty good reception, then I believe Retro Game Repair Shop might, might be talked into stocking them. Uh, otherwise, they will probably be stocking the non-laminated version. Um, but, of course, because it is laminated, uh, we don't actually have a shell to drop this in. I'm going to have to cut something up for it, but we'll cross that. We'll burn that bridge when we get there. Uh, I am going to go ahead and set that aside for now. These three do note that this is usually a little bit of a longer wire, about that long, in fact. Uh, but I trimmed it because I already tested it and uh, I have a different install method that I think is a little bit cleaner, works a little bit better for me, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so tonight's donor, it finally happened. We're gonna, wait, that's the wrong one, I'm sorry. Tonight's donor, it finally happened. We're gonna use this thing. So this is, for those that aren't aware, let me grab some baterias here. Let me pop them out of the old one here. And throw them everywhere. Jam those in there. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Oh, wait, no. Turn it off. Okay, let's go ahead and turn it on. There we go. It is one of the old 2.2 inch uh, TFT kits. Uh, we're going to take this one apart in particular because I have literally never used this thing. Uh, and even though this does have an extra special feature that I would like to utilize one day, it's not happening. I've had it over a year, never once touched it. We're not doing it. So 
This one in particular is gonna get salvaged for parts because I didn't even install the screen straight the first time, uh, let alone have a lens that um, works with it. Plus, that quirk of having to turn it on twice, it's pretty freaking stupid, right? We've come so much, we've come so far in terms of backlight kits that there's just no reason for this thing to exist anymore. So it's getting salvaged. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it apart. Pull the Game Boy Color out of her, out of her and uh, go from there. <clears throat> so comes apart like usual, six screws here. This particular Game Boy Color does have a McWill LCD kit in it, which means should I wire it up, I can do video out on it via VGA. Uh, however, this is one of the first generation Game Boy Color backlight kits, and thus it doesn't even run at the proper frame rate, so we're going to not do that. Um, that's going to be annoying if I have to redo that. I probably won't, but if I do. That whole surface mount crystal, dead bug it on there, that was always, that was always silly. I don't like how that looks. I'm going to clean up. All that solder. Just like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I'm losing my voice. And I think it's because I've been talking too much and not for another reason. Admittedly, this is not my first video today. It's not even my second one. I'm on a roll. All right. Let's pull that apart. Good chance. There we go. And pop that out of there. I'm just going to leave all of this in the shell. Maybe one day we'll revisit or rebuild, do something with it. But that day is not coming anytime soon. So until then, sleep tight. All right. This is the part we care about. Wow, that's funny. This board isn't even original to that shell. Notice the discoloration on the uh, silk screen here compared to the A, B, D-pad and start and select area. This was in a clear either Atomic Purple or Neotone's Ice shell. And I took it apart. Put in that Game Boy. Um, I should have somewhere on my desk a stock Game Boy Color screen that we should use for calibration. Let me find that. Found it. Don't worry. So the idea here is we're going to plug this in to this Game Boy and boot it with this screen. And we're going to check two different things. First thing is that A, it still works without that backlight kit, which it should. I don't see any reason why it won't. Uh, but second is we're going to get some power usage numbers uh, for comparison against stock. So I've talked about this before, but the idea is if we test this against a stock screen and oops, that's coming unplugged. And, you know, for example, you get, I don't know, 20 hours of battery life out of your batteries and then you plug in your um, your new backlight kit and it uses exactly twice as much power, we can ex extrapolate that your Game Boy should get half as much battery life. So let's boot that up at 2.4 volts. Game Boy does indeed still boot just fine. Grab and 
membrane here. That's not the right one, but it'll do. So in the overworld, Pokemon Silver, at 2.4 volts, this thing is pulling anywhere from 68 to 76 milliamps, uh, which is pretty on par for Game Boy Colors. Let's try out the new kit. The new kit. Alright, so that comes out. We're going to switch that off so we're not working on a live console. We have to plug in the membrane. It goes pins up, membrane, uh, ribbon. We also have to solder that wire to the C pin on the power switch. I'm going to get that done by tinning that pin. I'll just put a nice big glob of solder on it. In the wire the same way. And then take our tweezers. And just get that soldered down. <clears throat> Not the best soldering, but more than good enough. All right. The original intent, and they give you a nice long wire so you can manage this, is you route it down and wrap it around the positive battery terminal, but that is just such a uh, horrifying practice. Anyway, so this goes pins up, uh, LCD plugs into the connector, helpfully labeled LCD. It doesn't fully insert, like some of the older kits You'd slide that in and the pins would no longer be visible at all, but there's quite a bit of gold pin left over. But you can tell it's locked in there because that's not going anywhere. And then on this side, those pins down. Game Boy goes into the side helpfully labeled Game. And then, plug in our game here. <clears throat> Turn that back on and it boots right up. Now, I have already played with this a little bit, uh, hence why it doesn't look like the screen's on. Oh, hey, what's going on here? Oh, oh, we have a slight problem. Don't worry, we can work around that. So I'm thinking the problem might be the ribbon. I may have been, um, handling this a little bit roughly but it's okay we can work around that here's what we're gonna do so normally in this case uh, my recommendation is since the kit is a little bit defective return it exchange it get something that uh, that does work uh, unfortunately I I've messed this up a little bit. Let me let me touch up that joint before I do anything crazy. I promise it was working fine in the uh, in the other video I used this for. Let's touch that up. Right. If the problem is the screen itself, we're in trouble. Okay, so we can narrow it down to it being a problem on this side of the backlight kit. I don't know what that's about though. That's crazy. 
All right. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right. So luckily, these kits are built with fail safes. Just gonna desolder that. up and now I need some wire because I need something a little bit longer Like I said, if you get this far, definitely talk to whomever sold you the kit first. Because the solution is not to start soldering stuff together. Alright, I think will that be long enough? That'll be nice and long. And we'll give myself a little bit of extra slack. Tin that up. And this outermost square on the backlight kit, add a little bit of solder to that. Solder this wire down there. And boom. We now have a much more reliable path for power. Oh, the problem is I just soldered that on backwards, so the spacing is probably not what I wanted it to be. Because I wasn't paying good attention. Do better than me. Look at that. Now it works a treat. We have our touch controls. Screen brightness isn't being weird. Alright, so we're good to go. Oh, let us get some... <sighs> totally forgot to... Uh, totally forgot what I was actually doing here. Plug the game in. Try to get... Uh-oh. Maybe the problem is the power switch, and not my ribbon. Well, now you know, I guess. We probably don't want to use C. All right, back to the drawing board. Pop that out. That out. That's one way to determine if we have a bad power switch, I guess. So the reason I like to use C is because if we use C, that means the backlight kit is only ever powered when the Game Boy is switched on. There's no parasitic draw. However, the backlight kit should still be smart enough to switch off. So we're going to use pin 3 instead. and see if that helps. And I'll solder this to the ribbon. Try and keep things nice and clean. I guess that makes more sense because I thought the, uh, I, I was having a hard time believing that the ribbon was damaged. I didn't handle it too roughly. After all this time, one might assume I know what I'm doing. Though I do still make mistakes. Yeah, there we go. Oh, 
it's still flickering. What the heck? I wonder if it's just a problem with this Game Boy. Uh, now it's fine. That's weird. I don't know what's going on. Okay. So in the overworld, I don't know what brightness level we're on. Let us calibrate that. Oops. Went too far. All right, so we're on the lowest level. We have one. Oh wait, while we're on the lowest level, at 2.4 volts, it is pulling anywhere from 145 to 155 milliamps. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight levels of brightness total. Easy peasy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight on the max brightness at 2.4 volts. It is pulling anywhere from 196 to, I saw 220 milliamps, 184 to 230. It's going up and down. Uh, I'll average that on the spreadsheet, but let me kill the lights. Let's see this a little bit better because it's not that bright. But if I press and hold, we should have pixel grid emulation modes. Huh? Huh? Color palettes. I'll go over this more when, uh, when I get this thing installed. I'm just going to reset that back to default. Power it off. Give it a second. Power it back on. Notice it's at full brightness. I'm going to set it to low brightness. Power it off. Power it back on. Notice it's still set to low brightness. So, there we go. Just a quick overview of the new features, I guess. Um, seems pretty good. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Now that we have it tested, we can go ahead and continue with the install. Now, the install steps I'm going to take here are going to be a little bit different than if you were installing one of these normal kits because, like I said, normally they aren't laminated, but mine is. Kill the solder iron before I forget again. But the install is actually pretty darn easy if you have one of the new Cloud Game Store <clears throat> shells which I did just do this other Game Boy install, and this is that 2.45 inch kit, but the exact same shell here, except in a neat color, color. And then if we had an unlaminated screen, could just drop that in there, no trim necessary. Uh, it should come with a uh, adhesive gasket you put in there and a small little piece of acrylic for alignment. At least I believe it does, the 2.45 does. Uh, I don't know if the 2.6 inch does, I totally forgot. Don't quote me on it. When I did the last install on the 2.6 inch, there were no shells. You just kind of had to wing it. Um, at least there were no pre-molded shells, but in this case we do have one. But anyway, got to get the trim done. So I'm going to fold that up here. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and unplug that. I'm going to plug it back in later, just so I minimize my chances of damage because we have to install this here, but we also have to do some trimming to get it to fit. So, but before I start that, let us take a quick look at Funny Playing's shells here, because Funny Playing makes some shells for laminated screen assemblies. You just drop that in there and it just works. No trim necessary. But this one's a little bit custom drops in there. It doesn't quite line up on the top. Notice it's a little bit proud. And if we look on the back here, we can see it's because the screen is physically higher up on the lens area. There is almost no lip up there compared to... that's not a Game Boy Color. That is. Compared to the Funny Playing one, which the screen is slightly lower. So you have a little bit more of a lip there. So, unfortunately, you can't just grab one of the funny playing shells 
and drop it in there. Those don't work for this, but that's okay. What we're gonna do here, just set that aside. If we get that lined up, we can come around the back here and look and see what is not aligning and mark it up. So in the case of the side, unfortunately, it looks like we need to trim just a hair. So I'll probably use the file for that. Looks like we'll need to do that on both sides. But the top, I'm going to need to trim the top to just above this wall here. And I'm going to need to trim the bottom to pretty much... Pretty much the whole part. Uh, since I have a clear shell, I can kind of cheat a little bit. If I didn't have a clear shell, this would be a little bit more difficult, but it's okay. I'm going to get it lined up, and I am just going to mark that off with a scurple here. And same thing on the top. And so for this thing, I think, uh, I don't know how I want to do this. The bottom I want to trim by hand, but the top I kind of want to use the Dremel for decisions. Alright, let's do the bottom first. That's going to be the most difficult part. Because if we screw up the bottom, it will show. But what I'm going to do, pull out my blade here, lock it down, and then I am just going to make a cut along that line. I'm not pushing super hard. Uh, all I'm doing pushing hard enough to make a slight score and then I'm going to go over that line repeatedly making that score a little bit deeper each time you don't want to press too hard because if you have to press down really hard you have to pull it really hard as well and if it slips you'll gouge out uh, yourself uh, but you can gouge out the edge of the shell and ruin your shell. And that'll ruin your night. But then again, so will going to the emergency room because you cut yourself. So probably don't do that either. And those lines aren't perfectly straight, but it's good enough. You can work with that. Alright, now I need some pliers. Break it at the score. hardest part is that corner. There we go. And once we've got that, I think that was the hard part. Now we need a big bastard file. And I'm going to go along here on the edges to straighten out my cuts and clean up the clean up the cuts. This is going to take a long time so I am going to pause while I work on this and uh, every few minutes I'm gonna double check my fit and make sure that I didn't remove too much or anything like that. 
um, but this is going to take a long time and it is going to make a mess. You can also clean up the uh, some of the ripped up plastic. Just cut it off. But be cognizant of where your knife will go if it slips. Don't want to hurt yourself. But anyway, it's going to be a lot of filing. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so that was not an easy trim, but thankfully I think I got there incident free. Uh, you can see looking at it from the outside, there's not a whole lot to see as far as the trim or even the screen goes. But if we pop this out, if we can, there we go. There's a little bit of extra adhesive on this side the screen holds on to. So um, you can see I just filed down the left and right, not too much. I got a little bit, uh, went a little bit over the mark on the top here. Um, the top was by far the most difficult part. I approached it from this side with a milling bit and just went on a, uh, Went on a little cutting spree there, and luckily, I think I got away with it. I'm gonna clean up just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. I almost messed up right up here. You can see my cut goes right to the edge of the uh, shell there. So if I'd gone any further, I'd have cut into the area above the LCD lens, but. I got lucky, I didn't go too deep there. And then on the bottom, same thing. I trimmed that by hand and then I just cleaned it up with the file. It wasn't too bad. Uh, but you do, you do have to pay attention to these corners. Um, if you cut these corners not short enough, then they will hit the screen. And as soon as you insert the screen all the way, it'll break the screen. So I'm just gonna trim these just a little bit more just to be on the safe side. I'm going to get my finger out of the way because that was incredibly stupid. We just want a little bit extra clearance. It's kind of hard to get in there with the file without going a little bit too far. So I figured I'd do the rest with the knife. And I'm just cutting off some of the areas where the file kind of skipped along and left some marks that are visible from the outside. I figure if I trim it down just a little bit, it'll be a little bit less visible. Same thing here. Just trim that. That's it. We should be good. Go along here. Clean up just a little bit of that swarf. Get rid of some of the big chunks of plastic there, and I think we're good to go. So now, whoop, the smart thing to do would be to uh, test it and make sure it didn't break anything, but. Uh, I'm going to hope for the best, and we're just going to go straight to sticking this screen down. Um, because I did already test it, and it was already working, so if it's not working from here on out, it was my fault anyway. And I broke the screen doing all my test bits. And I am okay with that. Um, for adhesive... Da -da -da -da. We're not going to rely upon that little bit on the side there. Uh, I'm going to use some 300 LSE straight off the roll. That should be good enough. You don't need a whole lot. But I do need to trim it right down the middle. Doesn't have to be perfect, it's never going to make a perfect seal, um, but since 
the uh, screen is joined to the uh, oh, covered up the power LED. <clears throat> Since the screen is joined to the um, lens, you don't really have to worry about making a seal. Drop that in there. That fits nice and snug like. And we're good to continue the install that I started an hour and a half ago. Does that go? Pins up or pins down? I already forgot. I think it goes like that. Yeah. Now we gotta jam that. There. And I am forgetting several things. Um, like buttons. What buttons should we use? I think I'm just gonna stick with stock for now. Ew. Do I not have none disgusting buttons? Okay, that's fine. That needs a little bit of cleaning. So does that. But I can clean both of those on the outside. Yeah, good enough. The rest are all beat up and gross. this particular case, I'm going to pull that up there. I'm going to try sticking that down with some 300 LSE. Uh, I've got a little bit extra here. I'm not going to bother cutting off the roll. I've got this thing already sized up. Or rather, already trimmed. to the sensor. Hard time with this. Just 
can get under the paper. Oh, there we go. Good Lord. All right. Oh, no. No, 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 no. After all that, just to damage the screen, that would suck. Okay. Get in there, stay in there. Take the sensor, jam it with a little bit of slack right up against the top. I can squish it down, and it looks nice and smooth. You can barely see that I used way too much tape. Ta-da! All right, <clears throat> now normally you'd want to use the screws that come with the shell and not your OEM ones. But in this particular case, I don't know where those are. So we're gonna risk it. I don't recommend doing what I'm doing though. that bad boy look. Right, what are we missing? IR window per switch. Oh, that's pretty much it. Now I need to pop this out. And again, use the accessories that come with the shell instead of transferring yours over, but because of who I am as a person, I have no idea where those are. First thing I did when I got the shell was I took it out, started playing with it, and immediately lost everything. I don't know what I did with it. And the problem is, you know, you, you, you think to yourself, gee, Mako, it's a pretty distinctive bag. How can you lose that? And it's like, I didn't lose the bag, I put it with all the other bags. I don't know which is which anymore. I have a lot of accessory bags for shells. I buy a lot of shells. of who I am as a person. Alright, folks, we're almost there. Let's see if we can use... We don't use the nice tweezers for abuse. I'm going to push that tab in. So we can try and push it out the battery terminal. There we go. And hopefully this works. Nice.
You know, I bet this thing was flickering because it needs a clean. But, oh well, here we are. And I think my phone is getting ready to cut out here. I think I'm about to run out of storage. So I think I might take a quick break and splice this together. Even though we're almost there. We'll see how far I can get. I'll pay attention. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. Actually, let's test with... Matching cart. Eh? Eh? So let us do some of the test ROMs. We're going to start with 240p here and see the grid. Nothing's cut off. Nice. Even if we hold that at an angle because it's laminated, it is right up against that front glass. We're not losing any visibility on any part of the screen because we've got nice perfect circles. It's nice and linear. It's great. Love it. Uh, what was the other one I wanted to do? Let's do the shadow sprite. So with this test here, we are testing to see if there are any weird artifacts caused uh, by flickering on the screen on some of the other backlight kits uh, for Game Boy Advance in particular. There will be a flickering artifact on the screen, and then eventually it'll stop flickering, you notice. But you move it around, and then you see the flickering ghost of where it was and where you moved it to. Now, in person, I do see a little bit of a flicker, but it ain't too bad. Um, realistically, the kit's performing about as it should. I gotta clean this thing. Holy cow. I promise that wasn't all me. Anyway, looks pretty good. Don't see any, don't see any real issues. <clears throat> Pop back into the menu here. And we're going to go into my Matt Curry file because we want to do the scrolling bars test. So if you're new to my channel, uh, it's probably the first time or one of the first few times you're hearing me give this spiel. Uh, if not, I'm going to give the spiel again, get used to it. Uh, so what happens is we should see a smooth uh, scroll of these bars over to the left hand side of the screen. And every time that S hits the left, uh, it's issuing a screen res or an LCD reset command, uh, which not too big of a deal, but the older backlight kits did handle that extremely poorly, uh, where they just blank out for a second at a time, which is horrible in some games, but mostly work aroundable in most other games. Um, other t other kits would introduce some pretty bad uh, screen tearing when it resets. Uh, this, we do get a brief artifact, but it does mostly recover. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the performance. We'll try it out in uh, Pokemon Pinball in just a sec here. And seamless jump cut. You didn't even notice. Look at that. Anyway, 
It's not even on the same settings. Uh, sorry, phone was full. I had to clean it up. I will, um, I'll take a picture of these, um, pixel grid emulation settings because there are quite a few different settings. Uh, so as we press and hold this button and toggle through them, we're going through uh, the same few settings multiple times over. We got the normal pixel grid settings in color and then the pixel grid settings in black and white because you only have one touch sensor and that's how you toggle between both the pixel grids and the color and the brightness. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to the menu here. Let's do a few more tests and then we'll try out um, Pinball. So now I'm gonna try out Legend of Zelda, do my normal thing here. So we're gonna look at two things, and I didn't see them on the last kit, so I don't expect to see them here, especially since this is the same screen. Uh, but the first thing, we're looking to see if there's any artifacting from those brown fences on the green grass when we go back and forth, because that is a pretty quick switch between the two extremes of color there. Um, I don't see anything, looks pretty good to me. I'm sure if I slowed the footage down, I'd find something but that's kind of going to be the case with literally every screen, not just backlight kit, but screen. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is the um, this dude's chain here, because on the original Game Boy, there was no way to do transparency. So how devs worked around that to achieve transparency was <laughs> they couldn't do it. So here's how they did it. Um, they would just flicker the sprite on and off about 60 times a second, and with the horrifying pixel response of the original screen, that resulted in a nice, mushy, transparent image. Uh, but with these more modern screens, you get a much better pixel response time, and that results in a little bit of flickering. Uh, now, in person, I do see some flickering. It is what it is. Uh, in the preview, it looks pretty good, at least you know in my recording preview. I don't know how it's gonna look once we run it through the bitrate masher that is YouTube, but maybe it'll be pretty decent. Hopefully you'll see what I see. Um, I've seen better in some other kits, but this is by far not bad. Uh, the other thing we're gonna test is to see if there's any artifacting left over on the screen from that flickering object. And um, on the original, the really old backlight, like first gen Game Boy Color kits, that was a problem. I haven't seen that in quite a while and I'm not seeing it here. So I'd say this one is pretty darn good. So before switching over to one of the last games here, I want to do quickly talk about the brightness bleed, which there is quite a bit of it. Um, not a whole lot that can be done about that, especially because it's laminated. You can mask off the screen before you put this thing together. Uh, something like electri liquid electrical tape or even just regular vinyl tape over the screen would probably do you a pretty decent job. But in this particular case, the lighting is even enough that I actually really dig it. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm not too fussed about it. I think it's all right. Uh, there would be a little bit more on the bottom if that ribbon weren't folded up. But because the whole back of the screen is glowing. I think it looks pretty cool, but I understand that not everyone's about that look. Uh, but also I decided to go with clear. So if we had an opaque shell, uh, you probably wouldn't see that. Uh, what else? The other screen that I just did, the 2.45 inch version of this backlight kit doesn't have nearly as much light bleed, but it is still there. It could just be because it's a smaller screen and it's not nearly as close to the edges, but I don't know. I don't mind it. I think it looks pretty sweet. Uh, one thing for sure that we are getting as a pro over at 245 anyway. Oh, actually I want that menu. Slightly better viewing angles. And not just because it's laminated, like look what the colors do on that right screen compared to the left screen. That's the difference between an IPS and a TN, if 
for the most part. Um, granted, this isn't a bad TN screen, and this isn't a great IPS screen, so they are pretty darn close, but the 2.6 is a little bit better, and not just because it's laminated. Um, I could compare this one and we'd see the exact same results. Um, just slightly worse viewing angles again because this one isn't laminated, but that has more to do with what is being cut off the screen, not necessarily what color things are on screen. Not too big of a deal though. I mean, how often are you looking at your Game Boy from a weird angle? But it is a nice to have. All right. And Pokemon Pinball. So we want to test out Pokemon Pinball because this thing issues a screen reset command every time you move from the top of the level to the bottom of the level. And on the older backlight kits, specifically the uh, first gen Freckle Shack from Ben Ben, it made this game unplayable. It was bad. Uh, in this particular case, totally playable. Not a single issue. He says as he just fumbles it. That has more to do with my ability to play this game than the screen itself. So yeah, there are some issues if I look for them. Like I, I catch it for like a split second when it switches over, the, the screen is kind of glitched out. But that's only because I'm looking for an issue. Like I saw along the bottom there's a bit of a flicker. And then when it goes to the top, the screen is like down here and then it jumps up. And I'm sure if you slow down the footage, you can see it too. But it's we're looking for a problem at that point. Um, this kit does not handle screen resets as well as some of the other kits these days. But it's not bad. It's just not as good as some of the other ones. Um, but again, not a problem whatsoever. It's, uh, this is me looking for problems with synthetic tests. In actual gameplay, I doubt you'd ever even notice it. And that is totally fine. I am willing to call that 100% not a problem. All right. So that's pretty much it. I think that's all I got for this thing. Um, I think this build turned out super neat. I'm gonna have to grab some stickers for it. If you're using one of the Cloud Game Store shells, which I will go ahead and link below, it does come with both these stickers, a serial number and this uh, rear label sticker. Um, I don't know where I put them. I'm gonna put different stickers on this one, but it does not come with that sticker. Um, no, I'm I'm really pleased with both the shell and the kit. Uh, hopefully Retro Game Repair Shop does decide to offer them. Uh, unfortunately, the install is quite complex compared to some of the other kits. It's akin to shoving a uh, Funny Playing backlit kit into a non, or a funny playing laminated kit into a non-laminated shell. Let's put a game in there, huh? Uh, but there is the funny playing next to the Cloud Game Store laminated 2.6 inch. At the end of the day, they do look pretty darn similar. The biggest difference being that the funny playing one does have an illuminated logo. The Cloud Game Store doesn't. I think the Cloud Game Store lens proportions look a little bit better. The actual um, visible area of the screen is the same size, but in this particular case, uh, the Cloud Game Store one is a little bit more centered. Oh, and now we have to cycle through all these. Just to get back to turn it off. Uh, it does, I guess, it does have that extra feature of going black and white if you wanted it to. Which, personally, I'm probably never going to use it, but it's a nice to have. Uh, this is like the worst color profile for these screens at this brightness level. <laughs> they look perfectly fine in person, but looking at the preview, they both look like garbage. And I don't really know what to do about that. But, 
like right next to each other. They're, uh, you know, it's it's hard to find a problem with one or the other. They both look fantastic. I'm both, I'm pleased with both of them. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this in the video because I do maintain a uh, wiki style page of every single backlight kit I've ever got my hands on and some that I even haven't gotten my hands on, uh, though I do have a lot less detail on those. Uh, and I discuss pros and cons of each, uh, you know, what, what might be the best kit if you want to do this or what might be the best kit if you want to do this instead. And, um, I'm thinking this is going to make that list of uh, one of the best backlight kits. It's good. I really like it. Um, the biggest hurdle now is going to be whether or not it is actually offered. But, yeah, that's good. I'm digging it. Um, if you're watching this video because you grabbed one of these kits, the non-laminated version, I promise you, everything is the same about the non-laminated version except that it's not laminated and actually installing it in the shell is a lot easier because you have to do exactly zero trimming. Uh, there is still, of course, a little bit of soldering required, but you still have all the pixel grid modes, the black and white, so on and so forth. Is great. Uh, anyway, I will go ahead and throw some links in the description, uh, both to my wiki page that I was just mentioning, uh, but also to Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, if they don't have the laminated kit, I will link to a similar kit. Uh, if they do, I'll link to the laminated kit. Otherwise, I'll throw a link to these fantastic shells. I'm really digging them. They come in quite a few colors, like this clear that I just did another video on. Uh, I don't know which is coming first. So that might make more or less sense. Uh, they've got this blue chrome that I was going to use, but I opted for crystal. I think it came out pretty good. I don't know what to do with this one now, but it is what it is. Anyway. Uh, there's also some pretty good buttons. I went with stock because, I don't know, I was feeling stock. I don't know what I would use if I didn't use stock, though. Because I, I, I feel like lenses matching the buttons is always a nice touch. And uh, I can't really swap out this lens on account of it being laminated. But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm pleased, very pleased with how this build came out. It's one of my, it's top tier, one of my favorite builds at this moment. Um, that might change in the future, but I think I'm going to have to set this Game Boy Color aside for actually playing. Because let's be honest, I, I have a lot of Game Boy Colors. I don't actually play all of them. I mean, who can? But, you know, th this is just what's on my desk. Plus... Anyway, I'm pleased with this. I will shoot a link down in the description. Oh, you know what? Let's try one more thing. I'm so oh, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Let's try one more thing, though. I'm going to swap that out. We're going to plug in an Easy Flash Junior because it is one of the more demanding flash carts as far as power usage goes. And we're going to swap out my Jugies here with... There they are. I'm going to throw some nickel metal hydrides in here. These are not freshly charged, but they should be close to fully charged. Um, all batteries have a little bit of a parasitic drain on them, so leave them set long enough, the voltage will drop. We just want to make sure it boots the easy flash, no problem with the screen on bright, because, like I said, it is pretty power hungry. But if that boots no problem, I am comfortable saying we're not going to have any problems, especially because um, some of the other kits didn't work with this test. I don't remember offhand which ones in particular, but we're good here. Venice, Venice. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.